What are the treatment priorities for congestive heart failure? So again, I said people die because of pulmonary edema and respiratory failure. And the best way we have to manage that is with the use of diuretics. Okay. Now, interestingly, in the long term, diuretics do not have a mortality benefit. Diuretics help you to get you out of an acute episode. Uh, but many times you reestablish the appropriate volume status of the patient and then you may not need diuretics in the long term and you may use them only during the acute exacerbation. So, but as a paramedic, diuretics are going to be used frequently. In the long term, patients need to have better block. If they have systolic heart failure, they need to be on a better blocker. And there is a strong amount of evidence showing that if you have systolic heart failure and you're in a better blocker, your chances of be living longer are much greater. And you have to be either in an ACE inhibitor or an ARV. Those two medications are needed on board, even if you don't have hypertension. They are being given to you to prevent worse remodeling of the heart. So beta blockers and ACE inhibitors, and the beta blocker could be metoprolol, could be carvedilol. There are certain beta blockers that have been deeply studied on this. Others have not. Medications such as atenolol has not been a study on this. So pretty much metoprolol, carvedilol are the medications that we use more commonly. And then ACE inhibitors such as captopril and alapril could be used, or ARVs such as losartan could be used. Uh, those medications have to be given regardless of the blood pressure of the patient. Even if the blood pressure is low, they should be initiated in a higher dose. And the heart will adapt to that. At first, the blood pressure will be a little bit lower, the heart recovers a little bit, the blood pressure goes up a little bit, and then you can titrate the medications further. ACE inhibitors and beta blockers are first line of therapy for systolic heart failure. Diuretics are needed for congestion. See, if in spite of these three medications, you still have symptoms, then you look into other alternatives. We used to use digoxin a lot in the past. It's a medication that is supposed to increase the contractility of the heart. Uh, it doesn't appear to have any mortality benefit. It seems to have some improvement in the way that the patients feel. Uh, so some of us will use digoxin. If the patients have renal dysfunction, they may not be able to use an a ARV or an ACE inhibitor. So the combination of hydralazine and nitrates is indicated in those scenarios. Spironolactone is a diuretic that it could be used in patients with systolic heart failure that have an ejection fraction less than 40% and have a functional class of three or four. In that setting has proven a mortality benefit. Uh, so you will see that some of these patients have a spironolactone. Now, a spironolactone has the advantage that it's a potassium sparing diuretic. So you will see oftentimes that patients will combine, uh, doctors will combine furosemide, which lowers the potassium, with a spironolactone, which raises the potassium. And this way, they prevent the need of potassium supplementation in the patients. Uh, but if you go by the book, a spironolactone should be given only in patients who have normal renal function, with an ejection fraction less than 40% and still have congestive heart failure symptoms. Some providers, including myself, may use a spironolactone in earlier stages, yes, to prevent the potassium supplementation tablets, which are very large and uncomfortable for the patients. If you can't avoid it, uh, you know, you, I prefer to use a spironolactone in that scenario. Okay. So the, the key, key medical management would be beta blockers, uh, metoprolol or carvedilol. Um, and then ACE inhibitors, uh, you mentioned uh, captopril and uh, lisinopril. Um, and then those are the basics, even if you don't have hypertension. So it's not unusual to see a patient whose blood pressures may even be running a little bit low, yes. right around 100, uh, but they're tolerating it fine and they're still on beta blockers. Correct. The thing to remember is they're not put on those beta blockers and the ACE inhibitors for blood pressure controllers Correct. for heart failure. And then a progression, if they're not getting the effect they want, then you may add in some flavor of diuretic, mm -hmm. so either the Lasix or spironolactone. Um, and then, depending on other conditions, comorbidities, particularly renal disease, you may not be able to put them on um, an ACE inhibitor, and you may have to try something else. Correct. Um, and then the ARBs, um, there may be other reasons. They can't tolerate an ACE inhibitor, for example, because of cough. Or Correct. And something. that's the so most common reason on. why we choose an ARV over an ACE okay. inhibitor it would be the development of cough. Well, is there anything that you would like to um, add in, any points that you want to make 
for our first responders or our paramedics um, about uh, cardiology, anything, any message that you'd like us to, to help get out to all of our patients? So an advice to the paramedics themselves or to the patients they are taking care of? Yes, to both. <laughs> to both. <laughs> to so, their parents and families. And so so when, you, when you look at our society, uh, cardiovascular disease are still the first number one cause of death and number one cause of this, you know, disabilities, a stroke, but it's one of the most common causes of disabilities also. And when you look at it, there are multiple risk factors that lead into this. The way that I look at this is that this is a lottery. We all are running into this lottery of either having a heart attack or developing congestive heart failure. But if you happen to be hypertensive, now you bought 10 more tickets for that. And you, it's in your hand to control that hypertension uh, and to remove some of those tickets. So instead of having 10 tickets for that lottery, now you have only two because you are treating it. The same is true for the cholesterol. And notice that blood pressure and cholesterol do not cause you any symptoms. So mm -hmm. if you're waiting for the blood pressure and the cholesterol to cause you a symptom, you're probably waiting too long. So you got to remove those tickets of that lottery. In the case of the hypertension, it's easy with treatment. In the case of diabetes, it's easy with treatment. In the case of a smoking, it's very easy. You just have to quit smoking. So these risk factors are modifiable risk factors that you can take care of. If you're overweight, then that's easy also. You can have to work in losing the weight. If you have diabetes, losing the weight may help you with the diabetes uh, and controlling the diabetes with the appropriate medications will remove tickets for that lottery too. There are some risk factors that you cannot remove. You know, male gender is a risk factor. Age is a risk factor. Family history, which is really a surrogate of your pool of genes that you have, you can remove that. So, so there are some tickets you can remove. There are tickets that you cannot. So how do you remove the tickets that you can remove? Well, obesity is a cornerstone in diabetes, hypertension, and high cholesterol. So if you control your weight by exercising and by paying attention of what you eat, you're removing a bunch of tickets right there. Uh, so having a healthy lifestyle is the best thing you can do to prevent a stroke or to prevent a heart attack in the long term. Granted that it's a lottery and you may do everything right and yet your ticket will come. No and so there is a degree that you cannot control. Uh, so I would say that's the biggest message for the population, controlling the risk factors with lifestyle modifications, avoiding excessive amount of salt intake, uh, drinking alcohol with moderation, uh, smoking is a no-no. There is no reason to smoke at this stage of uh, human knowledge. There is really no reason to do it. And, uh, you know, if you do have a condition that needs to be treated, to make sure to treat it, uh, okay. especially hypertension and high cholesterol, I would say, are the two big that do not cause any problems. And chances are that you will get some side effects from the medications that you are given to prevent it. So you have to live with that, and it, it requires some degree of understanding and education to know that those mild side effects are worth it since they are probably preventing a heart attack or a stroke. And that's, I think, one of the things that's very useful for us. We have a role in our communities. People look to us for health advice. And if they're asking, I get a little lightheaded when I stand up in bed, or I get a little swelling in my ankles because of my blood pressure, or I have problems with a statin that I'm on for my cholesterol, um, that is a role where we can help to explain why we need to use those medicines. Well, Dr. Caldera, this has been a fascinating discussion. Thank you so much oh, thank you. For, uh, for being with us. Absolutely. My pleasure.